Greetings gamers, my name is Z-Hack, and if this is your first time stopping by the channel and you don't already know, I'm your Call of Duty League expert. In today's video, rather than recording the normal rotation with Z-Hack podcast where I talk all things Call of Duty League related, I wanted to try to put you guys onto something. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and I think it'll be fun for you guys, and you can advocate for me and get everybody else involved. What I'm talking about is Fantasy Call of Duty. Yes, like we all play fantasy football every single season, there is fantasy esports. There's Call of Duty, League of Legends, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, you name it, we have it. Fantasy COD is near and dear to my heart, and I love it so much. So I wanted to try and break it down to you guys today and get some of you to start to play, maybe join a league with me. And in the future, I'm going to continue to make videos about Fantasy Call of Duty and my expertise, my advice, my player rankings and strategies behind every single week. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump right into it. So like I mentioned, Fantasy Call of Duty is becoming huge, and I think it's only going to get bigger. The best host site right now is DraftBuff. They do a great job of putting everything together. It's really easy for you to start up a league and get things going with friends, family, or whoever it may be. I'm going to try and make this as simple as I can for you guys and compare it to fantasy football because that's something that's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. So the first thing I'm going to break down is the two different types of league that you can create within Fantasy Call of Duty. The first one is a redraft league, and that's your basic league like in fantasy football. You get your group of 10 to 12 guys who are going to be in the league for the long haul. Like you're going to have punishments. You're going to have draft parties. It's going to be an enjoyable time. There's going to be smack talk between one another when you're facing off every single week. When I talk about facing off, that's important when it comes to the redraft league. What you do is everybody picks their own team on draft day. So you can have four teams in the league, six teams in the league, or eight teams in the league. What you do from there is a snake draft. So it'll go from picks, if you have a six person league, it'll go from picks one through six, and then it'll snake back down six, five, four, three, two, one. And you will pick until you have your entire roster fulfilled for the season. Now, most redraft leagues have the basic setup of one AR, one SMG, three utility players, which can be an AR or an SMG, and then two additional players to add on to your bench. On draft day, once you get your team all comprised, you set in your starting lineup. The starting lineup is the one AR, one submachine gun player, and three utility players. That is your roster that you will play for an entire week straight in a head-to-head matchup. So how it works is one week I could be playing against you, your buddy could be playing against another one of my buddies, and at the end of the season, whoever has the best record is crowned champion. You can do a couple different things though. You can pick a champion however you want. Sometimes in leagues, we make it whoever scores the most points in the season is the best player. But for the most part, people do whoever has the best overall record and into the playoffs is the champion of that fantasy league. So redraft is a great way to get into Call of Duty and get things going. And now I'm going to talk about scoring that we often see in the redraft leagues. So you have all your players, you have your bench set out. Now you're going to think to yourself, what's the best strategy behind drafting? How do I know who's good, who's bad? Well, I'll tell you right now. It's based off of each different game mode. So your team and players are awarded different points in the hard point, the search and destroy, and the control. The basic scoring format that we'll see will begin with hard point, and it's pretty straightforward all the way through. It's not too hard to follow, guys. So it's a two to one ratio for kills to death in hard point. Per kill your player gets, you get two points. Per death, they lose one. So with this being said, an example, if my player that I drafted goes 20 and 10, he gets 40 points worth of kills, and then he'll get minus one point for each of his deaths. So 40 minus 10, he gets 30 points just from his kills in the hard point. On top of that, objective is awarded. So per second that they're in the hill, they get one tenth of a point. So if my guy is in the hill for a certain amount of time, those points will accrue and that adds on to it. On top of this, it pays to draft a player on a good team because there's a win percent bonus that you can apply. Most leagues do five points for the win bonus. And then the score at the end of the map, most leagues will do 0.1 points per score. 
So that means if you score 180, multiply that by 0.1, and that's what your player gets awarded to him based off his team. Next up is the search and destroy. Since this game mode is a little bit slower paced and more drawn out, points are escalated to a degree that if you get a good search and destroy player on your roster, you can dominate your league. Per kill, your player will be awarded 40 points and they'll lose 10 points per death. So if you find someone who can pop off in the SND, have double digit kills to get a huge bonus, they can play a crucial part to your fantasy roster. On top of this, there's objective score in Search and Destroy, where if your player plants or defuses the bomb, that's a bonus 50 points. So back in the day, a player like Karma in Optic Gaming was pivotal in the search and destroy for fantasy because he is the guy with the OBJ. He'll plant the bomb. A lot of times he'll be last alive and get the defuse. So that's a strategy you can kind of implement, which I'll talk more about in another video. We're just going over the basics today. The last part that factors into the scoring for search and destroy is those team bonuses like we found in Hardpoint. You get it for winning the entire map and also rounds one. So you want to find a player on a good team. The final mode to talk about in the scoring format is control. Things are a little bit different than hard point here because it is a respawn and round based game mode. So how it has it laid out in a standard league format is your player will get 1.5 points per kill and lose an entire point for a death. On top of that, playing the objective in control is important. One point is awarded per objective that your player gets through. And finally, you see those win bonuses for the team. Most leagues do it with five and then for a score or overall a seven point bonus for that player. All three of these game modes combine for your player's overall score from week to week. And on top of that, everything is taken into account for all the matches that they play. For example, if your player has two matches on the week, every single map and mode they play is averaged out between the two matches and that is their final score for the week. So that sums it up for the Redraft League for Fantasy COD. Now on to the final mode that's available for Fantasy Call of Duty. It's Draft Royale, aka Daily Fantasy for those of us who play fantasy football. This game mode is straightforward, plain and simple. You get a budget typically every week. It's $360. And from there, you have to comprise a roster of one AR, one SMG, three utilities. And on top of that, you pick a team. So how well a team performs is important to your roster that week. Dependent on performances from players previous weeks, they have their scale of how much the pay grade is to get that player on your team. Most of the time, a guy like Simp and anyone from the Atlanta phase this year will be anywhere from $80 to $90 upper echelon high cost player. From there, you have to work your budget out. If you want to pick one of those high value players, you have to figure out the nitty gritty, who has a good matchup, what kind of a player can perform against a worse team in the league this week who may be taking a fly all these things go into the draft royale and I think it's one of the most fun game modes to play in this you can join any league from thousands to tens of thousands of people competing for prizes to be number one at the end of the week with the team you draft the beauty of this is you get a clean slate every single week you get a fresh budget of $360 and you get to pick a new team for every single home series and also the major tournaments the scoring in the Draft Royale is pretty much the same as you would see for the Redraft. Straightforward, as both of these are kind of implemented the exact same way with the weight of kills per game mode and objective score on top of that. So there's not too much that's complicated as we look at the scoring in the Draft Royale versus the Redraft League. At the end of the day, I've always loved fantasy sports and it's been a passion of mine playing fantasy football, building relationships and just bonding with family, friends, having punishments. And now that fantasy has been brought into esports, especially Call of Duty, it just warms my heart. It's one of my favorite hobbies and favorite things to play nowadays. And it's fun for everyone. If you and all your friends love Call of Duty, start watching the Call of Duty League and try to play fantasy. Maybe one day you guys will even join my league. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are going to start playing Fantasy Call of Duty. I'd love to hear it and I'll have more Fantasy Call of Duty talk later on all over this YouTube channel for you. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thanks so much everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Peace.